You're listening to the Pat Thurston Show. Filling in for Pat today, it's Chris Merrill on KGO 810. In just a few, I'll give you some uh, hairstyling tips. Still to come this hour. And the sickness is getting better. Still to come this hour. But first, we start with the host of Today in Bitcoin on the World Crypto Network. On his social media, you'll find him at Mad Bitcoin. Thomas Hunt from that World Crypto Network joins us right now. And uh, Thomas, the reason we wanted you to be on the program is because um, I think that uh, uh, people that have uh, purchased Bitcoin and held on to it, uh, HODL, hold on for dear life, those have, that have held on are feeling pretty good today. Is that fair to say? I think they're feeling really good today. It's uh, Bitcoin broke 50000 for the first time. Tesla's holding it in reserves, and Tesla's accepting it for cars, so you can buy a Tesla with Bitcoin directly. Which, obviously, people in the Bay Area, that's excellent news for uh, a lot of early Bitcoin adopters and those that want to support the, the California car company as well in, in Tesla. Uh, Thomas, what is fueling this this most recent surge. Every couple of years, Bitcoin has a surge. And I've been doing this in talk radio for a while. And I remember back in 20, I think it was 2012, the first time I saw a news story about Bitcoin when it broke $600. And it was like, what, this thing's worth $600. This is crazy. This was only worth like, you know, uh, a penny uh, a couple of years ago. Now it's worth $600. And that was the first time I started paying attention to it. I thought I should buy some, but I couldn't find an exchange. I never really did it. Now I kick myself for it, of course. I suppose it's like, like being a kid in the 50s not collecting baseball cards, you really wish you had, right? Uh, what is sending it up this, this wave to $50,000 in value per Bitcoin? Well, what's amazing about Bitcoin is that it has a deflationary structure. So every four years, the amount of Bitcoin being produced goes down by half. So if there's only 21 million Bitcoins and you can get your hands on a 0.1 or a 0.01 and people do collect it, it becomes valuable it will become very valuable in the future. In 2017, it was more of a retail push. This time, it's interest from corporations. Uh, MicroStrategies is buying and holding it. MasterCard is offering it. Uh, a lot of people are involved this time, and it's a very different involvement because obviously the corporations have a lot of money that they're using to invest. How much of this, uh, Thomas Hunt from the World Crypto Network, how much of this institutional buying is, uh, to quote another uh, term that I see, uh, saw online, and then of course I saw others adopting it, how much of this is FOMO? How much of this is MasterCard saying, you know what, maybe we'll jump on board here because the last thing we want to do is be a financial institution who in five years missed this opportunity? I think a lot of it's FOMO. After Uber said they wouldn't do it, their share prices went down. Twitter said they were considering it, their share prices went up. Uh, MasterCard and the other banks have competitors. And if they allow their competitors to join in before they get in, uh, it could be a big problem for them for the future. So it could just be like dominoes. They keep going back and forth as more and more people join Bitcoin. Uh, joining me is uh, Thomas Hunt from the World Crypto Network. His Bitcoin uh, went past $50,000, and I don't, have the, I don't have the price right in front of me. I had the ticker open earlier. I don't, I don't have it in front of me now. Uh, you mentioned the point ones, the point oh ones. Fractional shares have been around for a very long time when it comes to Bitcoin, and I think this is one of the one of the for those that are unfamiliar, uh, it may be one of those obstacles that is not as difficult to overcome as they may have thought. You don't have to have fifty thousand dollars to buy Bitcoin, right? Definitely not. I think a great way to think about Bitcoin is in satoshis, which is eight digits down. So a point seven zeros and a one would be a satoshi and right now you can get one dollar will buy you 2058 satoshis uh, so if you just think about that it's a it's a pretty good deal it used to be about one dollar for 15,000 satoshis before that it was one dollar for 150,000 satoshis so if you think of it more on the low end uh, you really feel like you're getting value uh, rather than it's difficult to think about how much a, a 0 .001 is going to be worth. But uh, hardly anyone can buy a whole Bitcoin anymore. Uh, Thomas Hunt, uh, World Crypto Network. We were talking about Tesla here a little bit ago. Tesla has said that they are going to accept Bitcoin. They also invested, what was it, $1.5 billion of, of corporate money into Bitcoin? Is that 
Is that right? Do I have my numbers correct on that? Yep, uh, one point five billion of their uh, nine billion cash reserves. And immediately, of course, the the, the price of Bitcoin went up. So the one point five billion that they invested has now gone up significantly. If they were to sell right now, they would make some money. Uh, but uh, I don't think Tesla's probably going to sell because Elon Musk has been he's been a, a huge proponent of cryptocurrency for a very long time. Why is he bullish on cryptocurrency? And, and why do we still have so many other people that are saying, no, 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 this is all make-believe currency? Uh, why those two different viewpoints? Uh, well, Elon Musk has been interested in the idea of cryptocurrency for a long time, going back to uh, X.com and PayPal. Uh, I remember using PayPal on my Palm Pilot, and it really was kind of like a cryptocurrency. You'd pay your friends back. Uh, that's what you'd use before they became yeah. eBay's payment system and the fees went too high. Uh, I think the internet's always needed this. It's always needed a way to pay. Uh, typing in the digits for your credit card seems horribly insecure, and I think we've all had our credit cards stolen because of that insecurity. It's a system designed for the 1950s. Uh, so I think it makes sense that, of yeah. course, Elon Musk is seeing this. Uh, as for the other people who doubt it, uh, it's very easy to doubt a new technology like the internet, like the radio, like television when they come along, uh, but eventually, Everyone gives in and joins MP3, joins the internet, and joins Bitcoin. Yeah, well, I, I'm still not bullish on television. I think that's just a fad. And uh, radio is really where it's at. Just between you and me, Thomas, I think radio is where it's at. Uh, Thomas Hunt from the World Crypto Network. What is the future of Bitcoin? And I know this is always the tough part. There were people making predictions just uh, at the beginning of 2020, or maybe it was even 2019. They said, oh. Bitcoin's going to hit $125,000 this year. I heard a prediction last year that said Bitcoin's going to hit $750,000 in the next five years. Uh, and yet, if we take a look back, every time there's a massive wave when it comes to Bitcoin, uh, that wave has a, a, a huge pullback. Never quite back to the levels it was before it started the, the next wave, but there is a massive pullback. We saw that. I mentioned when it went up to $600, it dropped way back to like $200. Uh, the most recent, in 2017, it went up to $20,000. It dropped back down to less than $4,000. Now we're moving up here to $50,000. Are we going to see it drop back down to uh, $10,000? Or is it going to keep going and, and we've set a new, uh, a new baseline? Uh, well, I think I'm with the bulls on this one where it might go to 100 or 200 k uh, before dropping painfully back down to 20 k uh, There will be a drop. There will be an up. But... More and more, uh, looking at this long term, it just seems like Bitcoin goes up in value. Uh, right now at $50,000, everyone that's ever bought Bitcoin profited off of it. Uh, whether it was a dollar, whether it was $10, they're all in the profit now. Uh, so I would say, again, dollar cost averaging. Buy $100 a month, buy $1,000 a month. Try not to look at it. Don't look at it for five years. I imagine that there'll be more there in five years. Yeah, and of course, the, you're, you're talking about the uh, the investing term, the, the dollar cost averaging, because I do know a lot of people that did lose money on Bitcoin. Uh, I'm one of them. Uh, and the reason I lost money is because my wife told me I had to sell it. She got tired of me setting up. I had a bunch of uh, alt nodes and things like that that I was setting up. And she says, enough of that. I had uh, you know computer systems running in the, in the corner of the house, and my electric bill was up $350, $400 because of it. And she said, no more of that. And she made me sell it all which I thought was really kind of a raw deal, Thomas, because now I look at everything I could have made with those, uh, the alt currency that I could have resold, the Ethereums and, and the whatnots. I could have resold that, and I would I'd have a ton of money now. But did my wife let me do that, Thomas? Did my wife let me do that? No, because she lacks vision. Thomas Hunt from the World Crypto Network, she lacks vision. It's just like when Grandma oh, threw out your baseball cards. Uh, the comic books, they're all gone. It's the same thing. It would have been so easy. So easy. It was money in my hand and it's gone now. All right. Thomas on the World Crypto Network. Good to hear from you, man. Thank you so much. And I appreciate the attention that you're paying to this. Very good. Um, I, I'm fascinated as, as uh, Thomas just pointed out. I'm Thomas, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time today.